Hi everybody, my name is Luis Vargas and now we are going to create our first application using Dojo. So what I'm going to cover in this tutorial is two, two principal things. The first one is, is how to create a Maven project and how to use a Dojo declarative syntax and how does it work and what it means. So the agenda is going to be uh, what is Maven? What is a dependency manager and what other dependency managers are in there? Uh, how to create a project? And, uh, and also, I'm going to talk about this HTML data uh, custom attribute. And I'm going to talk about the data dojo config. Dojo type, Dojo attach point, and Dojo attach event that is mostly useful for Dojo. I'm going to create also a custom view or custom widget using Dojo. So to begin, I'm going to talk about what is Maven. Uh, Maven came from the word Jidich, which means accumulator of knowledge. Basically, Maven uh, do two things, two principal things. The first one is build a project, and the other thing is download the dependencies of the project. But it provides uniform build system uh, quality for the project information, uh, guidelines for creating a project, and also a transparent migration. In that way, you don't need to download or uh, download a jar. Or download a dependency because you just need to change the value of the, the version of the dependency. So, what is a dependency manager, or what other? Uh, sorry, what other dependency managers are there? there are uh, for Java, we have Maven, we have Gradle, and we have Ivy or Ivy. I don't know how to pronounce it. And there are others, but I don't know, I don't remember the names, and uh, um, since those three are the most important, I just uh, list those three. In Maven, you need a file called PanXML, in Gradle, a file called BuildGradle, and in IB, a um, file IB.XML. For PHP, we have Composer, uh, compo uh, you could use Composer.json, sorry, .json. And for JavaScript, we have no package manager. And it also depends on Bower and Grunt. Bower is used for get the dependencies and Grunt for build the, the system. When I say build in JavaScript, I refer to minifying the files. Uh, with Maven, we could also minify files. At the end, uh, we could use Maven could call no package manager sorry, cool code node, node.js to build the, the system uh, or you could use rhino.js but it's a little, sorry, rhino yeah, it's a dependency called rhino but it's uh, a lot low, it's lower than using node.js so most of the time you use, uh, you, you call node.js using maybe and for .NET developers you have NuGet uh, the file is called package.json. I'm not completely sure about that. And also, you cannot use NuGet on on Linux uh, until the moment. Maybe in the f uh, people say that in the future you're going to be able to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project. To create a new project, we need to open uh, we need to open NetBeans. And we could do right click and new project. Click this button new project or do file new project. Later we just need to select maybe select a uh, sort of web application and next. And in here I'm going to call zero one so zero one first up. I am going to leave this as it is right now, El Vargas, but because Luis Vargas, 
but it could be anything and at the end we're not going to use that so it doesn't matter and here i'm just going to change that as i say we don't need that but i just change it because it's my just a presentation and here we could use glassfish or apache it doesn't matter which one and we could use any version of java i'm just going to use the last version because uh, it's easier to me and also once the project begins to create um, it just create the project and the project in here and you can find the pon xml file under project files if you open this project you are going to see that it has a node an xml node called dependencies and inside it has it lists every dependency that you need we could add dependencies manually but i prefer to do it using uh, other things you can see dependencies in here listed here uh, so to add it i just need to do right click add dependency and later do dojo web jars as you can see there are many uh, different dojo libraries that you could use uh, this one is the one created by the dojo team i don't like this one because it's uh, a little bit more difficult to, to use it and a little bit more slower i prefer to use these dojo web jars um, also as you can see the version is more more updated in this one and you have two options the dojo which have the minified files and the dojo search which doesn't have minified files in fact i prefer to use this one because uh, uh, I prefer to use this one for development and this one for production. In fact, I don't use this one for production because what I do is minify all files into one single files and later, uh, and later uh, just uh, a minified version of all the files instead of one 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 by one minify. It's much faster. So once this version is added you are going to see the version in here and also you are going to see the change in here later you just need to build the project or just run the project to see if everything is working until the moment so that we just need to wait for for netbeans other thing that i like from netbeans that i don't like from Eclipse is that a uh, NetBeans automatically opens a uh, what's a Chrome. Um, I don't need to refresh the browser every time that I save a file. I just need to save the file, and the browser is auto refresh. I think that you could do that uh, also with IntelliJ, but I'm not completely sure. So I'm just going to show the browser and here here we go. This is the first hello world. This this is our application. Okay. And uh, Dojo. So now that we have created a project we are going to talk about the html5 data uh, custom attribute these attributes allow the users to put any kind of data to the html tags as you can see in here uh, you could put data showing time and when you call uh, basically this uh, attribute you, you call these attributes as data so, it's, for example, if this list inside the vegetable seeds, let's say that you call this list, you, you can say in the JavaScript uh, list whatever dot data, and it basically is going to list the data attributes in there. 
um, before before without data people uh, use this directly uh, people put showing time and it was a big mess because every everybody wants to put their own data and those data could uh, be messed with the uh, what's the name with, with the native uh, attributes so what are the dojo attributes most the most important or oh, oh, I'm going to talk about the first one which is data dojo config this one is mostly used use in the strip in the script tag sorry and um, sorry is only used in the script tag and as you can see this is inside the script the script tag and uh, this one contains the co dojo configuration in this case you are telling dojo that this one has activated the dojo firebox and the parse is going to be done on load also the files are going to be asynchronous loaded other thing uh, there are other there are many other different attributes the uh, attribute or properties that you can put in, inside but the most important are those three base url page pass on load asynchronous async or asynchronous packages and is the bug is the bug now uh, shows you the shows you some some messages in the console and so to um the first thing that i'm going to do is just add this to our project to see how this works you have two options uh, you could add it in line inside the script tag or you could add this this configuration outside i prefer add this configuration outside because it's uh, it's easier to handle than inside uh, furthermore you can put more stuff in here than here and here is is very limited so i don't like it so the first thing that I'm going to do is just add the dojo config script and also the script for the, the URL. Uh, this uh, presentation was created for a previous, a previous version so that I just need to change the version of dojo. That's not a problem. So I'm just going to open this web, to expand this web pages and open this index HTML. And inside here, I'm going to put the script in here. I'm just going to copy and paste because it's, uh, it's kind of long. And control C, control B. And as I told you, uh, the only thing that I need to do is just change the version. Change to point zero. And this is the CSS file that we need for our Dojo application and we just need the so the script tag and the script configuration and as I told you this one should be 10.0 so let's run again and see if we have error in our console I just need to press F12 to open the console or go to here um, let's see tools console you should copy JavaScript console and here we we have some errors server is born with a status 404 not found hmm, that's real oh sure oops sorry Dependencies one point. Oh, sorry. 
instead of dojo here is dojo slash source and for here also is source and I don't need to click this the wrong button again but if you want you could do it it's not it's just not needed sorry dojo source you just need to save uh, yeah, you just need to save and the browser is going to be automatically refreshed I haven't refreshed the browser it was automatically refreshed and it is still trying to use to looking for dojo.js dojo source sorry this one is different it's in here dojo source slash source because we are using the source if we will using the in production we will need to change those 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 three those balls we, we this ball need to be changed in production but uh, that's only one time in fact uh, what i do is create another index html for production and one for development and um, although it could be also created using maybe i don't do that but that's another topic so what is our next step we have this configuration already created and also i want that you notice these packages name uh, let me see if we had any errors no we don't require so other thing it says uh, it, that we need to add this require Dojo parser at the beginning. Let me see. Um, yep, we have him here. And save again. And this should, uh, this one is going to fail because uh, until the moment we haven't created this. So it's going to fail. Let me see. Maybe fail. Not yet, but yes, it fails. It's trying to look for this application and it doesn't find that application. Um, we're here. Now it should, it should, it shouldn't fail. Let me look for something. Location. Dot. Let's see. Okay. Um, most of the time, or sometimes, uh, for example, if you do this, uh, right now, I have an error. Mm. If you do this, you are still trying so if i refresh uh, this one is going to try uh, to open a different url mm. i'm not sure if, if this one is going to fail okay it looks that it doesn't fail okay it doesn't matter Okay, and then the next step, what is going to be the next step? And next step is, uh, it's, I'm going to talk about this data dojo type. What does it mean? Basically, this is used to define the widgets or digits. Mm, since in HTML, you cannot, uh, right now, uh, you cannot import or you cannot create other kind of widgets than the native widgets in the future you are going to be you're going to be able to do that using shadow dom and polymer it's a framework that handle does that handle that sorry but uh, by the moment we don't have this uh, this feature and dojo is going to handle that also in the future but right now we don't have that so we need to use this data dojo type 
and how we do how do we use that data dojo type to use that data dojo type we just need to We just need to add a tab, any kind of tag. We don't need to add a button. For example, to add a button, we need to do button. Inside this button tag, we could say, we should say hello. And I'm going to refresh to save, sorry. So the browser is going to be refreshed. And that's something that I don't like too much. And you can see uh, I create a new button in here called hello. But, um, sorry, not that one. But Dojo has also its own widgets or digits. Um, I'm going to create a digit button. A button, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Uh, when I save, you're going to see that it's going to be two kind of buttons, two different ones. Uh, this one is going to fail because one little thing. It's not going to fail, it's just going to show this one in a real way. Okay. Uh, this one is the other button. If you inspect this button, you see an span and you see a lot of elements inside this uh, bottom that we just created this one is the normal one and you could say why is uh, why should we bother on creating this kind of stuff instead of creating a simple hello button with the normal HTML hmm, mostly it is because uh, not all browser supports uh, completely the the bottom all all the stuff that the button has uh, so why it is not being shown correctly to do this we need to do I think class claro because I'm using this class claro means the, the basically the theme the dojo theme that the dojo theme that I'm going to use and this dojo theme came from this style that we just added at the beginning we added before so if we change this one we should change that one also so both of them should, should match there are other styles and you could see the other style if you expand the this jar I'm going to expand it here a little bit and you can see in here themes you can see claro nihilo soria and tundra you could test later but right now i'm not going to test it and is it, is it quite safe so now the page is refreshed every time that is safe i don't need to refresh the browser again and that's something that i like and now as you can see you have this hello this this button is more beautiful than this other one but the price is that you have a lot of elements inside this uh, this single element it created using javascript it's a big disaster Mm, other thing, uh, for example, to this hello button, you cannot put an icon. While to this one, I just need to put an icon, just adding a, a property. To put an icon in here, I need to do a lot of stuff. This one is just easier. And also, there are many kind of icons that I could add uh, without any problem, because it's dojo. Uh, maybe in the future, I'm just going to show how to add icons. Or you could look for how to add icons to Dojo buttons in the documentation, Dojo documentation. But that's going to be in another, in another presentation. It's the same for a text box, the same for a layout. Uh, 
The only thing that you need to change is the text box. For example, sorry. For example, if I would like to put a text box instead of a instead of a button, I just need to change this to text box. Also, this URL should match with sorry to look for digit I'm going to expand this digit oops digit dot form dot text sorry, dot form and inside here you could find uh, what classes you could use for this you could use button, checkbox, combo box, combo box mixing, combo, bo combo button. You could use whatever that is inside here. You could use formulas. And also you could put button in here if you want, if you prefer. But at the end it's not going to affect in anything. Maybe in the future, or hopefully in the future, this is going to change to Doja button. I think that we could achieve this, but um, by the moment it's not possible. This this should be in the future. I just want to. Oops. In the future, this should be in this way, but by the moment it is in that way. So this URL should match the URL that is saved in here since this is a Java way of showing uh, or showing the files sorry the dot should be replaced by the slash and is the same for this slash in here if you look for a uh, dojo source uh, one point you, we could look for uh, yeah we could look for Doja. I don't know what to find here. <laughs> uh, Doja, 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 Doja. Doja to jokes. So. Here. Doja. Inside this, I'm going to find the dojo.js file here we go this file is the file that i'm referring in the source the file that i'm referring here this digit text box it's inside it's inside this uh, form file this one told you the file this one is the file name if sorry the folder name and this one is the class name or the file name similar to java so text box should be in here so yes, it's in here so if i save this one it should change from a uh, and also as you can see uh, you can see the change of this style everything is changed and i don't need to do anything special i just declare this as a uh, touch of text uh, also you can see that the text box sorry <laughs> it was put as button but it was changed as deep as run in runtime so it doesn't matter the most important is this one this one doesn't matter so I prefer to use deep because it's easier, it's shorter we could use basically whatever uh, tag it doesn't matter which tag we use it could be whatever so what is the next step? oops 
So once we have created our first uh, our first button in Tojo, our first widget, we could also um, create sub widgets or um, custom widgets. And to create custom widgets, we just need to do. I'm going to close this one. Sorry to collapse this one and i'm going to say in here i'm going to create a new folder and say this folder i'm going to call app slash views and inside this folder i'm going to create my first view it could be called whatever you want just uh, i just prefer to call views because the mvc approach and so I just need, I need to create a theme, a JavaScript file. Um, this one is going to be called uh, first. This one is going to be called first. Finish. And I also going to create a a new html file and this one is uh, to me i prefer to to name both the javascript file and the html file with the same name as uh, so i know which one owns to which one here's also now what i need to what do i need to put in into the javascript file speaking i'm going to talk about the define so i just skip that define a function in dojo okay first for java users or for C++ user no mostly okay let's say in C++ you need to do include say, and you need to pass the name let's say that if you do in if you will be in in C++ you need to do so it's not include it's just got include okay, look, yeah. include and uh, dojo slash base slash declare if you will in java you need to do import dojo dot base dot declare and dot uh, whatever that's java star since in javascript uh, by default you cannot it uh, doesn't exist a uh, if neither import nor include you need to use this define this is a way there there is another way and this is called amd asynchronous module definition you could also use require but require is mostly when uh, when you just declare and uh, no sorry when you just uh, return a class mm, let me see yep without declaring a new object uh, i think basically i use require.js as a as a static class and define as a non-static class so what i'm doing here is just uh, telling a uh, dojo uh, sorry to javascript or dojo that i'm going to need those files i'm going to need dojo base declare digit widget base Digit uh, on digit click mixing, digit template mixing, and those other. And I'm also going to need this one dojo text. Here's HTML. Mm, this one is going to fail, no? Oh no, this one is not um, this one. Here's HTML, 
and I'm telling Dojo. Uh, I also most of the time put this uh, non required, non instantiated. So no instantiated. That means that for and um, also this one declare should match with that one and all of them should match with that one because this one is going to be let's say it's injected or pass it or whatever you want to the function it's in that way uh, the global scope is not a uh, is, is, is not dirty so you don't need to use the global scope every time that you create a new variable or a new class or whatever you create and um, uh, this one is better or uh, is useful but uh, some people doesn't like this approach because make JavaScript a little bit slower and that's true it makes it a little bit slower a lot of in fact it's a lot of this a lot slower and then I just need to close the sorry where is it I need to close this class sorry this uh, define, define function Okay, so in Dojo, um, the first HTML file is this one. So in Dojo, we need to use other other function called declare. Okay, uh, I'm going to call. So basically, um, I forget that. This declare, I'm going to return, and also, I'm going to tell to this declare what classes I'm going to use. I'm going to use widget base. Basically, I'm extending and declaring a class. And I'm extending that class with those other classes. I'm extending with those widget base with on the jQuery scene, templated mixins, and widgets in templated mixin. I'm going to close this. Sorry. So that one. Yeah, since I'm declaring a class and this one is waiting uh, this one this one this declare function waits uh, yeah waits two parameters the ones is the class that is going to be ex the, the class that is going to extend and the definition of the class of the object the object definition to begin, I'm just going to pass this uh, one method or one uh, attribute, and this attribute is called it's called template string. Since this class, the class first JS, is extending the class uh, template and mixing, uh, I need to pass the attribute which is going to be the template. And this template is going to be passed with that template, and this is going to be the HTML file passes as a string as a te as text, so it's going to be loaded later, and and then uh, that's it. So this first HTML is going to pass to this JavaScript file. And it's going to be used as template for this um, for creating the widget. Hi. Okay, so now to create to to call or to I'm going to edit this uh, first HTML. I'm here. I'm just going to put a tip. Okay. 
give and inside this tip I'm going to put on just a uh, hello world from widget I'm going to save everything and also uh, to instantiate this I just need to do two things to put this uh, element in here basically what I need to do is uh, just call it and let's call it doing a tip I'm just going to call it I'm just going to copy and paste because uh, it's too long for the moment we don't need this because uh, right now I'm just calling Basically, I'm just creating a new, a new widget, uh, a new widget that I, uh, I'm just instantiating a new widget that I, I create a class, right? So, at this moment, uh, where is it? As you can see, you have the hello in here. No, sorry, this is not. So it was an error. Uh, okay. They are views here, so. <laughs> so, what we need to do is just, uh, we need to do two things, two important things right now. The first one is change this, uh, we have before has href. href. Uh, we would better change this uh, to path name and also uh, we we just I just uh, come back to the normal one hello from widget and now uh, this is the way that it should be showed as you can see it says hello from widget and why I need to change the path name into the uh, the location dot href to location dot pathref. For example, if I put something here, let's say something here, whatever, uh, and I put something whatever also. If I try to reload this, it is going to fail. Probably it will fail because the URL was different, so the location href is different. If you look, location dot href, it's trying to 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 look for it. Look for this. Um, uh, dojo. When dojo looks for, for example, at slash uh, view slash uh, first name first dot html sorry it is going to it's going to add this url and it's going to look for this path like that and it is never going to be found so uh, to avoid that we should use instead location location dot a uh, path name give, give us the path name and it, if you add this to the dojo or whatever to the library path it is going to be found uh, without any problem so now uh, we create now I'm going to talk about this da data dojo attach point and what does it mean basically uh, this tell us um, what um, or uh, how can I explain that? It it is the uh, how it is going to be the values passed to the widget. Uh, let me see. Yep. Basically, 
how are you going to pass value to the widgets and where are those go those values going to be passed for example let's say that we want to pass a value title to the widget and let's say that we want to pass this value into from the index html so uh, we need to use data dojo props and what is data data dojo props uh, let's say that we want to pass a property from the this one and let's say that now i need to pass the title to this uh, to the widget i want to pass a title to the widget and i want to pass this title our song widget if right now i save uh, it's not going to pass anything um, or even it's going to choose as an error is just uh, it it doesn't not it doesn't pass anything right so to what i need to do is attach uh, this uh, i need an dodge attach point and i need to pass in here so basically i'm going to attach a title first name and I'm going to say uh, title no. Let's see. I'm going to say title no. And um, I'm going to pass in here to, to put in here. So right now it's going to fail because we don't have this uh, this event. So I'm going to delete this event. Right in moment. Okay, so dojo attach point. It's going to attach. Uh, yes, it's going to attach a title into the point that we that we specify. Uh, in that moment doesn't happen anything because we don't have this title variable also in the JavaScript file. We need that into the JavaScript file, and I'm going to call title and yeah and i need to pass also the first thing is to say uh and here i'm going i need to pass a variable of called title and this variable is going to, is going to contain nothing and also uh, during the post create of the of the widget i'm going to pass the value and i'm going to pass the value the title value to the inner html this one let me see yeah this one uh, in fact, this one is not needed right now. It's not needed. So basically, in here is the the way that I'm passing the value that came from the data dojo properties. I'm passing the value and I'm attaching this value to the title node. And this title node is this one. This is going to be the title node. So let's see our application and now you can see that we have at least two uh, yeah we have two two, two 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 elements this one I'm going to expand and as you can see this one contains the attach point I don't know in the future maybe this one is going to be shorter but now it's not sure it's not as short as we would mm. and now let's say 
that whenever I click this title it says well, how many times it haven't been clicked so to do that I just need a one function called onClick uh, let's do this in that way so let's call this Oh, okay, before continuing, I'm going to to say that this uh, title, this value here, it's basically the default value. For example, default, I'm going to call it default title. And whenever I save, it should show the default title. Uh, where is it? So as you can see this one our some widget if I don't put the the value if I don't specify the value from the color in that case this one should be here if I don't specify the value it should show the uh, default title which is the one that we specified in the JavaScript. see if it works yes and as you can see it shows default title now uh, go to this one this one works oh uh, now uh, let's say that I want to add uh, our next step is to add yeah. basically this uh, could be whatever this uh, it doesn't matter the name it could be whatever you want at the end the only important thing is um, the javascript or are you going to call that um, but the events are important because the events um, uh, they have uh, the final names in that case we are going to, to create an event and we are going to create the event on click for the widget and let's say that so um, I'm just going to attach the on click to our function called on click and how do we do that the first thing is just saying here I need to attach this uh, one more okay so I'm telling that I'm going to attach this on click uh, sorry this function this function this is the name of the function this on click function to this on click events okay and and I also need to declare this function or this method inside the class. So it's going to be on click. And this one is going to be a function. And also this one, I think that it needs the event. Oops. I need the event. Let's see. No, it doesn't need the events, but I'm going to leave it there. And here I'm going to say um, on click. Uh, I'm going to say uh, console log hello Oops. now it is refreshing. We need to wait for refresh and uh, that's something I don't know too much uh, from from developing with Dojo that it takes a long time for refresh I think that we could use a um, full minified version let's say that if on click this one it say hello as you can see whenever we click but if we click this other one it doesn't it doesn't show hello 
So to make it more useful, a little bit more useful, I'm just going to say that um, if it was clicked before, um, if it wasn't clicked before, uh, let's say that if it wasn't first, if uh, first click, and I'm going to call, create also the two variables first click and counter so control in so basically if first click is false that means that if it wasn't click I'm going to say the title that it has lost was click uh, plus was click but if it was clicked I'm going to say the title plus the number of times that it was clicked let's say that if that how it works uh, so this one so now instead of uh, Printing in the console log hello is going to be was click the first time, second time, two times, and so on. And that's it for now. In this moment, we have created a second widget and we could reuse this widget as many times as we want in the application. Let's say that we want to use the widget again, and we just need to instantiate another widget, and, and this one I'm just going to call it second widget. To see what is happening, and that's something that I, I, to me I don't like to do too much HTML. In fact, I prefer to do everything using JavaScript completely without uh, HTML. But uh, for the sake of presentation, I'm just showing this in this way. In the next videos, you are going to see how to use, uh, how to create widgets and how to create uh, applications without HTML and only using uh, JavaScript. As you can see, we have two widgets. The first one and the second widget and basically we don't need to do the html code again because we just instantiate the first widget and that's why uh, this is the power of dojo and the widget also you can see that the events are attached in a different a different way and the values are different so you don't need to it's it's easier they are different and they are attached uh, that's something that I like because you don't need to create and create again you could also say that for example if you want to add a let's add a um, let's add a class to this widget or let's add a style a simple style let's add a simple style for HTML let's see to this title now mm, I'm going to call this star mm, account color let's see what color do we have uh, no, 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 that's this, just this, and let's see the border, the border color, mm, this one, and also I'm going to change this let's see if we can change this in here most of the time you don't do that in here to do that and uh, 
using list or using SAS or using the stylus. But uh, as, uh, before, just for the sake of, of presentation, of knowledge, I'm just going to say, let's say border, border color. Brown color uh, spacing, is, let's say no, that's enough. I think that that should be enough. Let's see if that works as I expect, or it doesn't. You see the with the title that is in different color, and let's see now if the no, it doesn't work. Okay, did that as well. Why oh, this one didn't work? Oh, this I the color. Silly guy. Uh, border color. Um, border. Border. Border color, border size, border width. Let's go one pixel, two pixel. And now let's see if that works or not. Maybe the colors could be different. Oh yeah, we'll stick quarter. Quarter width. Hmm. Okay, it's size. Don't remember which one. <laughs> Color values start with mm, I think that it's um So that's the body that I need, brown and solid. And for I need everything. Mm, damn it. Let's see. Over there. And let's say this one uh, style. Style equal border and uh, so the color let's say blue. Let's say theme. 
Uh, let's say the target or dash it. Dash it. Cool. Okay. Put the save. And wait for a fish. And now we have two different widgets with two different styles, but uh, instantiated uh, using the same logic and using the same HTML template. You see? This one uh, is useful if we want to create a lot of widgets and we don't we don't want to instantiate uh, every widget. We don't want to repeat the HTML. Basically, it's the HTML inheritance which is uh, yeah. which cannot be used directly in the normal HTML. Maybe in the future it's going to be possible, but now it's not possible. So let's see what is next. So basically, this has been the complete presentation. I hope you like the presentation. As I told you, my name is Luis Vargas. Uh, if you want to get the source code of this application, you can get it in, in it's going to be in, in the, in the video, ah, what's the, oof. it's going to be in the, in, uh, at the bottom of the video. So thank you.